All right, welcome to part two of lesson one, three. Um, so this goes for station two. And here we are going to be looking at solving absolute value inequalities. So equations was in part one. Um, here we're gonna be looking at the inequalities. So inequalities, if you recall from algebra, is anything where we have the symbols less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So that's what we mean by inequalities. I will give you a warning here, um, and I'm one of these people, so that's why I'm warning you. If you write really big, you may want a separate piece of paper. I am gonna squeeze it all in here um, just because it's a hard decision whether I wanna write big or whether I want it all in one place. But um, I am gonna squeeze it here in the book, everything that we're gonna write. But if you write really big and you don't like things to look squished, you may want a separate piece of paper. So that's up to you. So what we are going to look at are solving these absolute value inequalities. And we actually have two separate um, sets of steps because our procedure is slightly different for absolute values where we end up with a greater than and absolute values where we end up with a less than. So no matter what, the first thing that we have to do is we have to isolate the absolute value term. So regardless of what type of inequality we're starting out with, step one is always, always, always to isolate the absolute value term, meaning get what's in the bars all by itself. You cannot move things from outside of the bar. So I can't like subtract this three or divide by this two. If it's in the bars, it is currently untouchable. So we just need to get that absolute value term by itself first. We need to isolate it. Once we have done that, then that's where we split based upon which type of inequality we have. So I'm just going to draw two arrows here for the two separate situations. So if when we isolate the absolute value term we have the symbol greater than or greater than or equal to, I call these great ors. And the reason I do that is because what we are going to do in step two is we are going to write two separate inequalities. So if we are dealing with the great or, so greater than symbol or greater than or equal to, then our step two is going to be to write two separate inequalities. And the first one of those is the same as what you had in step one, but no bars. You take away the absolute value bars. So identical to what you got when you isolated, except no absolute value bars. The second inequality that you're gonna write is gonna have the left side, same as A. So meaning you're not changing what was inside the bars other than the fact that the bars themselves are gone. But then you're going to flip the symbol and then change the sign of the constant. So 
So if the constant was positive, you're going to make it negative and vice versa. Step three is going to be to solve both inequalities. All right, so like I said, two separate sets of steps here. One, if after isolating we get greater than or greater than or equal to, then we'll have a second set of steps, which I'll use a different color here, is if we get a less than or a less than or equal to after step one. I call these, instead of great ors, I say less than for an and, and I also say sand which sandwich is my own term that I have made up that is not a technical math term for these they're actually called conjunctions but no one ever really remembers that and sometimes people remember that they're called sandwiches so that's what I go with so we've already isolated because regardless of which type we have that step one we only split at step two if it is a less than or less than or equal to symbol you do not write two separate inequalities. We write one sandwich inequality should not be plural super late. I'm getting tired. Um, we write one sandwich inequality with less than or less than or equal to symbols depending on what was in the original where expression from the bars is in the middle And the constants on the end are the one from step one and its opposite. Sorry about the squishing, I did warn you. Step three will be to solve that compound inequality or that sandwich inequality. Now, the other thing that we have to talk about besides how we solve these are the fact that we also need to be able to graph our solutions. So the graphing um, we're going to follow the same rules in general, regardless of which um, type we are dealing with here. So steps to graph, things to remember, are that on the number line, we use open circles on our boundary numbers. for a plane greater than or a plane less than. We use closed circles for greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. You should also remember from algebra that we shade to the left for less than, less than or equal to. We shade right 
for greater than or greater than or equal to. The other thing that's always true is that if you have done an or, your picture should look something like this, where the shading goes out to the arrows every time. If we have done an and, a sandwich, your final graph should look something, and again, it might have open or closed circles, like this, where the shading is between. And there are no exceptions to that. Now, one other thing that's super important that I remind you of, that's just a general solving thing that people forget, is that we have to flip the symbol in a couple of different situations. And this is all the same as what you learned in algebra. You have to flip the symbol if we multiply or divide by a negative and If we switch the variable and constant sides, meaning if I switch my x from the right to the left and I do a little flip flop, I need to also flip the symbol. So, those are important things you learned in Algebra 1 that are going to apply here. So we are going to do um, two quick examples. I'm going to try to get through them here. So we're going to do C and D together. And so step one regardless is to isolate. So on C, isolating means that I'm going to subtract this one because I need to get the, what's in the bars by itself. So that's going to give me absolute value of 5x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. So step one is done, isolated, yay, finished. Okay, next thing is to decide which area I need to go to. So I look at my symbol, it's a greater than or equal to. So that tells me it's a great or. I'm gonna write two separate inequalities. The first is gonna be the same as what I got from step one except no bars. So the first inequality I'm gonna write is this guy. Then I have my or. It says that the second inequality, I'm going to keep what was in the bars the same. That expression isn't going to change. But then I'm going to flip the symbol. So flip it this way and change the sign of the constant. And then step three is to solve them. So add two, which gives me 5x greater than or equal to 5 and divide, I get x is greater than or equal to 1. Over here, same steps, add the 2, which gives me 5x less than or equal to negative 1. Then divide by the 5. That doesn't come out evenly. Please don't give me a decimal. It's a fraction, negative 1 fifth. This is the algebraic solution. So when it asks you to solve, this is the answer. Then it also says, and graph. They gave us a little number line here. So I've got positive 1 and negative 1 fifth. So if I make the middle 0, if this is 1 and this is negative 1. Then, um, because it's an equal sign, the extra equals means I get the extra shading on the dot. So it's going to be a closed circle on the boundary number. Greater than means shade to the right. Don't forget to shade the arrow because they keep going. Negative one-fifth would be closer to zero than it is to negative one. It's going to be a closed circle there. And again, less than means left. Don't forget to shade the arrow. So when I've done this, note that this makes sense with what I said here. Ors, the shading goes out to the two arrows, which this one does. So that looks good. 
All right, last one in this station, D. First thing I'm going to do is isolate. So in this case, that means to add the four, add the four. So absolute value of 2x plus 7 is less than 5. This time, less than symbol. So it's going to be less than sandwich. I'm writing a sandwich. The reason I call it a sandwich is because I put the expression from the bars in the middle. So 2x plus 7 is the expression from the bars. I use these symbols, in this case it's a plain less than, and I am sandwiching that expression between the constants. So the constants are what I had here, which is 5, and its opposite, which would be negative 5. They do need to be in order, that does matter. You can't put the negative one on the right side and the positive one on the left. So that order is important. When I go to solve these sandwiches, which again are technically called conjunctions in Algebra 1, to get the x alone, I'm getting the x alone in the middle, which we're not used to. We're used to it being on the left or the right. When it's in the middle, that means I need to, whatever I do in the middle, I also have to do on the left and the right. So here this gives me negative 12 less than 2x, which is less than negative 2. Then x is still not alone in the middle. I need to divide by 2. So I do that. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So now I've got negative 6 is less than x is less than negative 1. We actually read that an easier way. You can read it that way if you want, but technically we really say that means that x is between negative 6 and negative 1. So if I make 0 here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. My boundary numbers are at negative 6. It's going to be an open circle because it does not have the equals and negative 1, also open circle, and then the shading goes between, because that's what this means. And that matches with what I have here. Hopefully that helps you to review what you learned in algebra about these inequalities.